All right, guys, it is officially 2025. It's a new year. We're in a whole new crib, which I am very, very excited to show you guys. But this is going to be my third year of university and I am going to become a software developer at some stage. I thought it'd be good to share with you guys what is on my MacBook here for this year. Let's get into it. It's for somebody special. So basically, I want to start things off with this thing called Raycast. Now, I've seen it on a bunch of different YouTube tech channels, and I thought that I should just give it a try, right? It replaces the spotlight feature that's on your Mac. So when you press command space, the search bar comes up and you can search for apps to launch your apps. You can search for different files. You can search for, you know, everything that's in your Mac. Now, the difference with Raycast is it basically supercharges that for you. There's a bunch of things in here. Like even I don't know all the different things that you can do with it because there's a bunch of different commands. It has a bunch of different features way too many to even count. I mainly use it to launch apps just like the normal spotlight feature, but I also use it for calculations, which is really handy. And you can also run a bunch of commands on it, like putting the Mac to sleep, controlling Spotify playback. I also use Raycast for volume controls as well. It really is so much more powerful than the inbuilt spotlight feature that comes with Mac. I just use it for everything. It's got clipboard history, color wheels. There is a feature that I do like to use um, if I don't know what a word means. You can just type the word into Raycast and it has an inbuilt dictionary. You press define word and it'll come up like that. So that's also another really cool feature. Um, there's cool processes. There's, there's this, what is this confetti feature? <laughs> I mean, there's a confetti feature. That's pretty cool but there's like all the different things. You can even empty the trash, which is actually really helpful. I will say there are like some pro features as well, but with all the free commands that you get, you don't really need the pro features. So recently I've seen a lot of different tech people like Siobhan, he's gone crazy over Opera lately. So I looked at it and it's like jam packed with features. Like there's features everywhere. You've got a sidebar, you've got inbuilt media players for Spotify, you've got split screen, you know, there's even like, you can put emojis for your different tabs. There's tab groups. You have built in web apps like Instagram and Messenger are already there in your sidebar. There's even AI there as well, which is pretty handy just to have. A cool thing that I really like is the YouTube pop out. So while I'm watching a YouTube video in one tab if I navigate to another tab or even if I navigate to a different window on my computer YouTube video will automatically pop out I don't know how Opera thought of that but it's super super handy like if you're if you want to keep something playing in the background and you still want to watch it like for instance the NFL games that are going on depending on your computer it might not be the best for resources like that's what a lot of people are saying like it takes a lot of RAM it takes a lot of resources it takes a lot of battery and stuff but the thing is this thing has a battery saver option on it so I just turn that on my Mac still is lasting for a long time with a bunch of tabs open. The battery isn't getting hit at all. So they've even optimized it for that. The thing that's so good about Opera is it's completely free and jammed packed with features. So yeah, this is why I have finally made the switch from Safari and Chrome to Opera browser. There will be links below in the description. No matter what computer you have, get yourself Opera because it's free. All right, so as you guys know, I use Notion for just about everything note taking wise. And if you guys have been following the channel for a while now, you'll understand and know that I use Notion to plan all these videos for all of my uni, for my journaling, for like literally everything. And I think almost everyone does nowadays. It's like one of those apps for note taking that's just unmatched in its organization features and quick keyboard commands. If you're a student, even if you're in high school, don't care what your school is telling you to use, use Notion because that's what I did. My school told me to use OneNote and that was the worst note taking app ever. It has hardly anything that you need. But for notes, Notion is where you need to be. As a computer science student, I'm constantly trying to make SSH connections and run commands in the terminal on my MacBook. And yeah, the terminal is great, but I have a great app for you guys if you guys are just using the terminal. Download Warp for Mac. You see, Warp combines AI within the terminal to make typing lines faster and more streamlined. It uses the predictive text feature like you'll see in an iPhone on iMessage. You can even type in natural language instead of a command. If you don't know the command name, then the AI that's built in will suggest the command for you. It's its recent update means that the AI will proactively recommend fixes and the next steps I need to take to any related errors, inputs or outputs in my terminal session. So the website claims that you can literally be a power user and yeah, it literally makes you feel like you have a lot more control over your MacBook 
with this terminal. And another small thing that I will use for my software developing things on my MacBook is Homebrew. Um, if you guys don't know, that is a package installer for software developers if you have a Mac. You can download Homebrew within your terminal and then from there you can start downloading a bunch of things within the terminal using Brew. Yeah, so basically Homebrew is the package manager that allows me to install things directly from the Warp terminal. It is a must have for developers using Macs. If you're new getting into computer science and you have a MacBook, download Homebrew it's free it's on the internet grab yourself the latest version of it and then you can start downloading your different packages that you will need for later on now for my code editor I use PyCharm and WebStorm which is JetBrains branded now listen everyone uses Microsoft Visual Code and yeah it's good I don't have anything against it it's just that because I'm a uni student I get the JetBrains licenses so I'm using PyCharm at the moment for my Python programming because I'm still just you know learning to code I'm in that early stages of learning development and then for like my web development and you know making the HTML pages the CSS the, the type scripts you know all that sort of thing I'm using WebStorm so yeah my pro tip if you guys want to get PyCharm or WebStorm or any of the other IDEs that JetBrains offers and you're in college or uni you more more than likely have access to stuff like this with your school email it's always important to check like any software that you might have I sort of tried to check with like Creative Cloud for Photoshop and stuff but I don't think most unis will allow you to get that unless you're doing like a creative degree but most other different softwares like whatever it is always try your school email and try to get like the free license because most of the time your school will have a license for that and then the other essential apps that I have that you have to have on the MacBook as a student is just Spotify for my music player Apple music doesn't come close reminders for like my to-do list I use notion calendar to schedule everything that just links up easily with notion and then I use Apple mail as my main mail app which is just Gmail but just it shows up in Apple Mail. But those are just like the essential apps that I need to use, that I need to use for my day-to-day -day tasks on my laptop. All right, and then as for the settings that I run on, on this MacBook, what I like to do is go to the settings straight away and change the tap to click. So on the touchpad, when you're using it, by default, if you just tap, that doesn't register as a click. I don't know why Apple hasn't made that, but I like to just tap to click. So I change that. This is a must, so I can just tap the trackpad to navigate my MacBook. I rarely ever press it in fully unless I'm dragging something around the screen. Number two, I like to organize my different desktops or spaces is what I think Apple calls them. So I use four desktops max and I switch between them frequently with the three finger gesture. So the first one I'll use for like note taking or, or anything where I'm writing in, Notion, Word documents, essays, whatever. The second one I use for like web surfing. The third desktop will be like my Spotify player. And then the fourth one is like if I need. So basically I sort of run off three, but I have four like if I need. I think it's better to have those different workspaces because if you have everything on one desktop, you're always navigating between the different apps and it's kind of like all over the place but I can easily swipe between my different workspaces in my brain on the laptop so like I can just go from where I'm typing easily across to the to my research on the internet then back to where I'm typing my essay so yeah that's just the way I set it up and it works really well for me all right and then the last setting that I change on my MacBook is more space setting this is a setting that makes everything a little bit smaller but gives you more screen real estate I know it sounds crazy without actually physically changing your screen size like this MacBook is 13 inches so it is already a little bit small but I like that for portability and just the overall feel of it but because I like to have a bit more screen space if you make everything a little bit more small by changing your display to more space, you just feel like the screen is bigger. And after using it for a long time now, changing it back to the default, I can't go back because everything just seems too big and, and too like crowded. So those three settings are the settings that I must have for this year going into my degree when it starts soon in a couple months. And I think all these settings and all these different apps that I have introduced to you guys will help you guys if you guys are going into uni this year, if you have a MacBook. Even if you don't have a MacBook, try some of them out. I know Notion, Opera, PyCharm and WebStorm all of those apps can be used regardless if you're on a Mac or not. These are my apps and my settings that I will be running for 2025 as I go into my third year of my degree moving forward. I'm so excited because I'm in a whole new place and I can't wait to show you guys that soon. I will be doing a, a bit of a house tour once I get everything set up. Guys, I still need to buy a bit more furniture. Me and my housemates, yes I have housemates now. 
you guys will get to meet them they'll be on the channel too we're all starting our own youtube channels as well so that's exciting and let me know if any of these apps helped you or if you have any apps that might help you for your macbook setup or for your laptop setup don't forget to subscribe if you can it really helps out the channel it helps the channel grow and get it out there to more people and give this video a like as well you have to do that that's not an option okay i'll catch you all in the next one peace have a great week Thank you.